Good evening, everybody. Uh, we have a quorum in attendance. It is now 5.49 p.m. and we're going to call the meeting to order. So um, we have with us virtually tonight, uh, Peter and Jack from Dodson and Plinker um, in the audience. We have Don McIver and uh, we have a quorum present. So we will get started. So our first item of the uh, evening is meeting minutes approval. Uh, I think we're going to, uh, it's all good evening. It's here. Just start. Just start. Yeah. 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 My feet. Yeah. Oh, there's one there. Okay. Oh, come on down. So I believe we'll um, postpone uh, minutes approval until the next yeah, because we do have to work on a few copies of uh, this meeting minutes and uh, we'll get drafts out and get those approved at the next meeting. Uh, next up, we have member updates. Are there any member updates? <coughs> Hearing none, uh, any staff updates? Hey, you got anything? Oh, I got nothing. Just minutes. Ah. <laughs> and any public input? Don, do you have any? Sure. I'll, I'll make it quick, realizing you're tight in time. You know, the Concon meeting coming out. So there, there, there are a whole slew of things, but there are the two issues I, I, I mentioned for this evening. One is do you have sort of a focus and sustainability? I know it's very prescriptive of what you're supposed to put out for the open space and recreation report, but it's quite obvious that the administration is doing sustainability and climate uh, adaptation and resistance across the entire agency. And this document you know, now has gone a life of seven years, you know, from five. So it's going to be quite obvious to get grants and so on you know, things that are contained in this for the next seven years, you know, would do well to look in that direction. So in addition to all the mandated parts you have to put together, it'd be nice to have something more dealing with sustainability, such as, you know, maybe land acquisition that would do, deal with, uh, you know, biodiversity, less flooding, uh, less heat generation or mitigation for the like, trees and so on. Uh, but anyway, so that, that's one take. The other take is a whole slew of unfinished things the town has promised and has never carried out and or has partially done. And I, I can provide a list of some of the sunset conservation restrictions. They're mandated because CPA funding says that, like Church Meadows. There's Mill Pond, which both New England Forestry Foundation and, and I from the Logan Conservation Trust have punctured land uh, to be used in order to clean up Mill Pond. I mean, Corps of Engineers was on that, and Light Water Department was there. But yeah, you know, no, no one drives it, they, they just forget it. So, you know, uh, the transfer of development rights is something we've been pushing for a long time. Even the selectman has that in the polls, and I've been pushing it with the plane board. And that's only been like 20 or 30 years pushing this. Um, Cobb land, the uh, Whitewater Department agreed to do something 30 years ago and committed to it and it hasn't. Um, and as the documents, uh, the Gog Hill Orchard, of course, is something we all know about that has never been monitored. And even the Spikeman admit that they don't have the expertise or the time to do it. So however that gets developed, the United States is group that typically monitors that, maybe the time top of the web or whatever. So anyway, there's a whole slew of stuff that like that, unfinished business. Google land that promises there too. You know? So they're easy to make promises. And, and the Morgan land, that was supposed to be transferred to Hong Kong when two triggers. And after that, even keep Bergman dissolved the legal agreement that people voted for. And, and a town meeting without anyone's permission. So, you know, they're, they're, they're unfinished business. Okay, so anyway, that, that's it. two things. And I'll, I'll write something and, and send it in. But I, I think it is important to address some of that. We need to clean up some of the stuff. 
as they meet some of the commitments we've made with both finances and town meeting votes. Absolutely. Yeah, if you could send us a, a list, that'd be great. You know, and start uh, looking into getting some things accomplished. This is an opportunity to review stuff and clean it up. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. That's it. That's my damage. <laughs> All right, so uh, next we have um, updates from Dodson and Blinker. Uh, Jack and Peter, did you have any updates for the uh, the committee tonight outside of what's already listed on the uh, agenda? Um, I don't think any, I don't think, well, um, what's listed in the agenda may not cover what I share with you in the email. So I'll sh um, I think what we have to share tonight is um, a fuller review of the public meeting too. Uh, Findings and then uh, of before that a review of um, the community survey for where it is right now with one more week to go before we close it. Um, so those are the main things, and then from that we'd love to launch our discussion about goals and actions and, and vision for for the 2016 plan that we can take away some some of your input tonight and draft some things to share with you all. Um, I also just wanted to follow up on what what Don just said that it would be incredibly helpful, Don, to get all of those things in writing for us. I you know I heard and took notes as, as best I could, but I'm sure I missed things. And I think a complete list would be very helpful for what we can do in the plan. Right, and in turn, if I get to see what you're working on, I can focus it a little bit better. So you have a much better draft when it's done. So uh, yeah, having low access of works in progress would be very helpful for, for both of us. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, so, so we have a presentation that we're ready to, to go into whenever the committee is, but if there's other items to talk about first, then um, that sounds great. Uh, Jack, why don't we jump right into what you have for us tonight and, uh, and then we can, um, Going from there. All right, sounds good. I'll share my screen. Looks like I need to be made a co-host, maybe. Okay, you should be good, Jeff. Awesome, thanks, Alicia. So um, actually a lot of what we'd like to share tonight is a sort of a, a summary of the public input process we have so far. because we've gotten a lot of input from the second public meeting and from the community survey so far. And so, so I think that's the main focus for this presentation is trying to find what are the big takeaways from that that can inform the planning process. Um, here's a photo from the public meeting to Alicia's group was talking about recreation and trails. Um, so we plan to go over the community survey and go deeper through some of the findings from the public workshop than we did last month, and then get some of your input on how those findings inform what the community vision for the plan will be and take a look at um, some goals and priorities. After, and then we'll finish up with some ne talking next steps, um, a process to share some drafts with you. And we um, a quick review of what we've decided on for public meeting three in September um, and a brief update on ADA self-evaluation. Um, so that's what we have. Um, so we'll get, get right into it. Um, so as of today, there's been 395 responses in the community survey. Um, it's sort of tapered off since the week, first week of July, which had a great turnout um, for whatever reason. I, I can't remember what the, what the efforts there were, but 72 responses. I was curious if there are paper surveys uh, that have been returned and if um, those have been put into the system um, or if there's a plan to do that. Do you have any more? I don't have any more. All well, the ones you gave me. Actually, I have one. <laughs> okay. I have one. I can actually run upstairs and give it to you then. Okay. Otherwise, they've all been good. 
Oh, okay. awesome. Yeah. That's, that's terrific. So, yeah, so I think tonight the um, review of the preliminary results will be, will be fairly complete then. And, you know, hopefully we will get a couple more in this last week, but it, it's going to close this Sunday. So, um, so there, there probably won't be too much more, more information. Um, this is a review of who's taken the survey. Again, 395 respondents. Um, this, this is them in the background information that the survey asked. And it showed that 98% uh, of the respondents were residents. 12% uh, also said that they both live and work in Littleton. Um, a, a lot of those respondents had, had lived in Littleton about two thirds for more than 10 years. Um, and then only 7% had lived in Littleton in the last, moved to Littleton in the last three years. And another quarter has have been living in Littleton for the last four to seven years. Um, majority were female um, and the majority were age 40 to 64, um, which is, I think, maybe common for, for surveys. I'm not sure. I don't, um, can't say that definitively, but in the surveys we've done, that seems like people who take the surveys um, and are, 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 are engaged that way. Um, <laughs> The, were the age were, was it were the, excuse me were those the age brackets or was there more? Yeah, uh, there was one more or one or two. I think there was um, you know, there's two younger age brackets, um, maybe under eighteen and eighteen to twenty five, and that those weren't combined. Those are just whatever you got from from the the, one, the ones here are not combined. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah, if you're adding these up, it comes to like 98% of the survey respondents, I think, um, 97. Um, and then uh, the income levels, so upper middle income, only 10% um, of respondents had a, reported a household income under $100,000 a year, um, and but a quarter, 27% declined to, to say, so, um, there could have been um, more economic diversity, but um, more more respondents were representing a more upper middle class background, um, predominantly white respondents. Um, and looking back at the top goals and values, um, uh, and this chart maybe is more complicated than it needs to be, but there there were this the first uh, the ninth question asks about people's top goals and values, which is sort of the main thing, um, one of the main things we wanna focus on tonight are what, what are the goals and values that people care about. Um, and um, drinking water quality was 20% of the respondents put that as their top choice. They were, they were able to choose three top choices and that was their number one rank. Um, and um, when we look at the weighted, that looks at both their, their top, um, for, for any particular category, uh, combines it weights the top, those who put it a top choice, their second choice and their third choice. Um, there's a lot of overlap. The column on the left is just the top choice and the column on the right are the weighted average. Um, and I think, um, so drinking water quality, the top five were pretty much the same, beauty and character of the landscape, um, youth development, enjoyment and quality of life, and agricultural health and local food were the top five goals and values that people ranked. Um, so that's helpful to know what people are caring about um, and maybe informs our vision statement. So we might return to this later on in tonight's meeting. Um, equity and access was also important. Um, even though not many people ranked that as their top priority, many people ranked it in their top three. So it came out higher on the weighted average. Um, and economic prosperity was also um, came, out, came out strong. Um, economic health and biodiversity is worth mentioning. And that, that came up in public meeting too a lot as well. One thing that I wanted to mention and also in relation to Don's comment is climate resilience um, was on this, this list of top 10, um, but uh, was not later on when we talk about the public meeting more, it really wasn't mentioned a lot. But it's it's really important, obviously, very important to town goals and uh, community goals. So, um, but people may not be ranking it as highly or talking about it as much. It seems like. Um, 
And so these were some um, areas of, of sort of opinions about the status of open space and recreation resources um, in Littleton. Um, about half of people feel like Littleton disagreed that Littleton has enough fields and recreation facilities. So that was the highest level of disagreement and sort of the highest, showing the highest need for, for um, yeah. more. Oh, um, I, hold on, I'm moving you guys. Let's do that. Is that better? Yeah, okay. thank you. <laughs> thank you for the clarification. <laughs> Go ahead, Jack, I'm sorry. Good. Oh, sure, no problem. Um, people also disagree, there was a lot of, disagreement about the rural character of the town. And that's sort of a larger, maybe philosophical discussion about the town's identity. We've touched on this before. Um, and the survey asked people if they, what they consider Littleton. So we'll look at that question about whether people consider Littleton rural or not. Um, the question about that open space is sufficient to ensure climate resilience had a, a lot of mixed answers, pretty evenly divided between agreeing, disagreeing, agreeing, and not having an opinion or not being sure. Um, it may be a more technical question. And then um, these, these others had higher levels of disagreement than some other ones that aren't on this list, but they also, majority of people agree that there is enough farmland for locally grown food. Um, there's sufficient parking and the recreational programs meet the town's needs. When we've looked at um, some barriers that um, we asked about barriers for open space and recreation. And the top uh, one that people mention is they aren't sure what is available or where to find them. Um, or they don't have a good map or concerned about getting lost. But these are still only a quarter to 40% of respondents. Um, and then um, uh, about a third of respondents didn't feel there were any barriers and indicated none of the above. Um, also worth mentioning here, there was concern about safety and ticks. 84% um, or so said they feel like they have um, access to a park conservation area trail within 10 minutes of where you live. Um, so that's pretty good percentage um, and, and something to, I think, to celebrate. Um, it's also worth paying attention to the, who are those 13% who said no. Um, and we did have a question saying, what street do you live on? Which there's, there's no way of aligning that question with this question. Um, but um, uh, we will take a look at where people who are, who are responding to the survey were, were, what streets, if they're concentrated in particular areas. Um, and these are the top 10 areas that people visit in, in, within the last year. And it's not surprising. They're mostly um, some of the central town parks and, and uh, recreation areas, with the exception of Oak Hill and Prouty Woods. Those were the two larger conservation areas and the others were athletic fields, schools, the common, Fay Park, the beach. Um, so those are very, those seem to be the most popular open space areas. Oh, and, and, and Long Lake Park um, adjacent to the, the lake. Um, the top recreation activities that people mentioned, and these are what people said they do in Littleton, uh, trail activities were, um, really highly mentioned is, is something they people do in, in Littleton, um, followed by outdoor wa water activities and some nature observation. Uh, and, and then leisure is also the same 61%. When we look at just what people said they did when they indicated that their ch children did on the survey, um, that was more focused on outdoor sports and recreation. Um, uh, trail activities was still mentioned um, here, 23% of people uh, said their children um, use trails, but then it was mostly about these sporting activities, both inside and outside. And then there was part of that question was also the wish list. What would you like to see in Littleton? Um, and the top um, item for that, 28% of people would like more fitness activities for yoga, um, machine exercise weights. Um, and indoor sports, which I think has come up before about maybe a hockey rink or other facilities like that. Um, leisure and social activities as well. For ADA accessibility, um, one of the things that's striking about responses to this question 
uh, is a lot of people indicated that they, they don't know or don't have an opinion. Um, so um, it may mean that they, they themselves don't have uh, ADA need um, and it's not on their radar as much. Um, or it may mean that maybe they, they just, maybe they want more information. Um, so, um, uh, well, one thing to look at is also that there are some people who felt like there are not um, enough accessibility features in town. Um, so around 18% for adequate number of um, uh, distribu distribution of parks, trails, and recreation facilities. And then um, these other two questions are about um, meeting, meeting ability needs through um, accessibility features and programming. Um, this is the question I mentioned before about whether people how people that identified Littleton as being uh, rural or suburban. Um, and the majority, 48% of people, the highest amount felt Littleton is a place in transition between some of the above. So only 11% identify Littleton as a rural town, but also not many people, only a quarter identified as a suburban town. Um, and very few people thought of it as a bedroom community. So um, I think this means that Littleton is in a place of figuring out what it is and, and what its future is, um, which is exciting and an opportunity for this plan, but also leaves more questions. Um, so uh, the question about budgeting, 70% um, 70, 70 of people said they would support dedicating more of the town's budget to achieving open space and recreation goals. And 25% um, indicated they would like more information, but only 5% said no to that. Um, so there, there may be support for, for dedicating more funding to, to open space and recreation. So that's, those are the main findings from the community survey. I can pause here in case there's any questions. Um, there's uh, the survey, you, you know, you'll have a chance to look through the full findings of the survey and go deeper, but um, those are some of the main highlights that we pulled. Were there any questions? I don't know if you have this. Did, did, um, I was wondering how the demographic information from the survey compares to the town demographics. Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, so I think that that would require a little more research. I, I can't say that right right off the top right now, but yeah, you can put that in context. Any other questions? All right, great. So, um, so we'd love to look again um, in, in with the survey and now also with the public input we got from the public meeting a little bit more closely. Last meeting was pretty cursory review. We've had a chance to look more closely at, at some of those results. We'll, we're gonna look at that right now. Um, so the, there, there are three mapping activities. One was for recreation and connectivity. This was Alicia's group and here are some highlights that people put on the map um, for opportunities. Um, so people saw, they pointed out some places for adding public fields. Um, for example, at the point, um, there's some town land uh, near Oak Hill, and I think near a DPW site um, uh, uh, off of Taylor Street. Um, people mentioned adding a pavilion to Fay Park adding lights to some fields at Kipper Field and Whitcomb Field for, for evening activity, um, adding a field or park near the Church Meadows area. Um, there's also a call out to add, maybe make a general activity space on the other side of, the, of Route 2A there, um, adding trail access into Westford in that area um, to, get, to connect to Kimball's, um, forming connections between Long Pond and the town forest and also maybe going south. Um, and then maybe um, extending some of uh, Williams land off of the Newtown Hill conservation area, um, creating a community garden along the God Pond. Um, and uh, there's a, people mentioned a ritual area in the Sarah Doublet forest and, and maybe expanding and enhancing that. 
Um, there's also a question about the Neshoba um, area that, um, uh, Neshoba Day Camp area, I think it's called, um, that uh, sounded like the, the town might have the right of first refusal for the potentially acquiring that property. I don't, I, I don't know a lot about that right now, um, but that, no, that was called No, I think people are interested in that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there is. No, okay. I've never heard one that way. Yeah. It, it's under a chapter for some kind of open space, but I don't think that's a likely possibility. Oh, yeah. Okay. Great, thanks. Um, so maybe, so we might remove that. Is that what I'm hearing? That um, I don't so. believe that exists. I think the the idea that I remember from that night was that people were interested in wanting to um, uh, see what the option or the possibility of that could be in the future. Well, if it is under 61, whatever recreation it yeah, is, so you see, right. then we would have right of first refusal. Okay, sorry. Right. Yeah, so legally the first right of refusal, but that's also where the Neshoba right, Indian uh, structure was right close to Saradelva. So there are some concerns yeah. about the cultural, archaeological aspect. Maybe they meant up more in the orchard? Uh, area to be. I'm not yeah. sure um, where they met. Barn, maybe like where the other side of the road from the orchard. Yeah, on the on the other side of the barn from the ten or so acres that the compound the right has. I mean, it sounds like it's a show the camp area. Can you yeah. see my Can you see can you my cursor for the for the garden? Um, yep. Uh, yes, and you you talk to the folks there, and they they have no intent of letting it go. They're planning for the next several generations. Neshoba Day. Yeah. Excuse me. Neshoba Day is there? Or for the Neshoba Camp area? Yeah. 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 Uh, ask Sarah. <laughs> uh, um, I'm not sure about the community garden, and I don't know if you remember more about that, Alicia. Um, here it is on the on the original map, like right here. And uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but um, it looked like it was right on Nagog Pond there. Um, well, we don't do anything right on the pond, but there's probably area where we could do one. Yeah. So it's not out of the realm of possibility, I wouldn't. But I will also say, I don't think a lot of people knew that there were community gardens available already. Except so, they're all, yeah, they're yeah. all booked. And, yeah. My, my point point pretty sad sad location is okay. if that area has yes. been an open space before there's concerns from Concord or the use of the God Pond, that's been an issue in the past. I don't think yeah, that's what I said. It's not going to be pot. Yeah. Maybe possibly some other place in the orchard where maybe the trees are gone. Yeah, there was, yeah, well, it also call out for the orchard to maybe be used for some field sports as well. Um, and that we can't do. Yeah, we are. I discussed okay. that with a lot of folks that had suggested it because it's, it's not. Um, I'm forgetting the title of it. Is it APR agriculture preservation? Yes. Yeah. So there's okay. a yeah. So there, it's not even a possibility to or do that out there. Conservation land, right? Yeah. Something. But garden would be a possibility somewhere on that. Yeah. Hundred acres or wherever much it is. Okay. Yeah, I think away from the water would be the concern. Yeah, we want to be able to. Right. Yeah. It's wetlands down there anyway. So yeah. That makes sense. Um, Alicia, did you want to add anything to that? Any of this this list of priorities that came out of your group? No, I mean I think that covered it pretty well. I, yeah. It's interesting to see some of the callouts for for maybe future athletic field locations. And I don't know if you, <laughs> um, you know, that's that's an important discussion. Um, it is, uh, yeah, and I know that's something we desperately need in town. Um, but I think some of them. Like I think the one um, somebody had suggested Bay Park, and it's like that's not mm. Bay Park's going to stay Bay Park. We're not going to we're not going to change that to athletic field. So um, at least seven years. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> I 
as long as I'm here, I don't want to be that. Um, but we do, we do really genuinely have to address being able to get um, enough fields to be able to allow the sports organizations and the schools uh, to be able to play and be able to rest and care for those fields. And we can't do any of that right now. Um, so yeah, it, it definitely came up as a topic. Do you think any of these locations are um, maybe are worth circling back on to talk about more um, uh, like some of the town owned properties that people called out maybe? Um, I, I definitely can take a look at it in more depth and, and see, but there wasn't anything that really screamed out to me as being like, yeah, that's totally going to work. Um, is, that, is that one down by Oak Hill? Is that the Whitcomb Avenue? properties near the wells and the new treatment plant. I'm not sure about that. This one here? Yeah, I'd have to take a closer sure. look. It's That's too what far. Away. That's what it's right now. Yeah. Yeah. That was on some town owned land. Um, um, and I can't remember the name of that street, but it, it, it was, it was, um, I think it was a, there was a water. Um, yeah, there, there's wells down there and a new, treatment plant. There is open land. I think the water department now controls it. It's open land and zone two is the Sanderson family. Yeah, they, and it's not like the town of conservation. It's not huge, but I, I see no reason not to have it on there in case something magical yeah. does right. become available. And some that's on our egg now. Currently, we don't have a lot of options for space for it. Yeah. All right. Well, um, we might circle back to some of the, this, these and getting more nitty gritty into the um, some action steps later on in the process. Um, uh, and then th these were from the ecological and water resources group station that um, also highlighted some places to protect um, on these maps. And people pointed out along Beaver Brook towards sort of around where it crosses 119, um, protecting the water from salt um, and, and, and also from 495. Um, and then there are some areas that seem to have high ecological value from the state um, data, the biomap, and, National Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program near Church Meadows. Um, the call out actually kind of covers it up, but that's those are all areas that are, have high ecological value according to those programs. Um, and then near the app conservation area, and a lot of vernal pools in that area. Um, and then wetlands around the town forest. Um, there's call out to, to maybe connect a town forest to new town hill conservation area and some of the wetlands in that stretch between the two. Um, some uh, interest in the, acquiring the Webster land for conservation um, and then around Fort Pond um, and, and uh, Sarah Doublet Forest, I think down there. Fort Pond is all surrounded by private land, the only exception is the very narrow part owned by Conservation Trust, and we don't allow anyone to have access to the pond because it's not only difficult to get there, but uh, neighbors don't want it. And there's, so I mean, uh, it's always surprised to see a poor pond, uh, there's, there's no access to it. Hmm. There should be, right? It's it's a great pond, mm -hmm. so there should be, but they can't make you have it. Yeah. Once again, a great pond, you have access once you're on it, but there's no way to get to it. That, that's true of any pond that's 10 plus acres. So yeah, if you're if you're a guest at someone's house, you can be on the water, that's fine, but it's there, there's no easy access from the shore to it. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me. I, I don't know why that's any, if you're a guest to somebody, you can go on the pond. It, it should be access to the public to it, but you're saying they can't but take it's, it it's all, it's except all that private. tiny little sliver, yeah. it's all privately owned. So, well, and except for some 
really heavy wetland areas. Yeah, I so mean, which someone has been through access to it. Um, well, you said, I mean, so unless we buy private yeah. property, right, which can be a goal, yeah. there's no public access. Yeah, there's private property all the way around. Unless we've got Camp Neshoba, there's no problem. And why can't you go through this sliver of land with the conservation of trust? It's very it's nice. really, is it very it's, rugged? It's not. Well, I know it's physically you can't, but could some improvement be made to that that you could go through? I mean, that's publicly owned land, right? No, it, it, it's owned by the conservation trust. And as Sarah dealt with is, and they make the rules to protect it. So they're interested in not allowing people access to it only because it, it's, it's not practical. Okay, they make the rules to protect. That's the last question I'll ask. Who's they that make the, the rules? Conservation trust. Okay. It's very narrowly. Maybe it's more than 10 feet, I guess, but it's, I mean, very narrow. And there's no, it's very narrow. It's very rugged. Right. It's very steep. It just doesn't make sense. And people occasionally will trespass. Sometimes it cuts across other people's land. But people will publish books about trout fishing, suggest doing that illegally. They say, ah, oh, it's fine, but it isn't. I mean, it, in any practical sense, it's only a long way down to very thin sliver, very rocky. And I mean, again, if you had a canoe, so you'd have a heart attack before you got a canoe in there. And it's deep. Yeah. yeah, and that's the only thing that's out of conservation. The rest of it is owned privately. There's uh, Lowton Lumber has their windows fitting place. There at the end of where the Mega Road, uh, there are Cohen's at the end of the, the, the uh, Speed Point. Thing. That's our conservation plus it's also private. There really the, is the, no the town owns the area just north of Kaliva, I believe, and it's it's 100% marsh. Um, and I can't remember who I was talking to. Somebody has been in there, like at high water. They've I have. Been, I've got my canoe through there. Okay, maybe it was you then. Yeah. So. Uh, that's the first time for anybody actually be able to get but you have a legitimately friend, you just go on their, their land and just get permission to just walk back there. Tech, all technically speaking, it's probably fine to waltz back there if you have permission from you know a person that actually owns the land. Yeah. But in the 10 foot, you could go on it, but it's technically just too hard. Is that why I'm getting it? It looks it's not I, he's not doing anything wrong by doing it. Well, well no, 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 the yeah. 10 foot is the conservation trust. They got something around the the marsh is the town, the marsh. At, at one point, about well, 15 it's years ago, we had a canoe yeah. trip there, and we had permission to enter the industrial area owned by Wilton Lumber. And there were a lot of complaints from the neighbors, though, who was on this pond, even though we had permission for it. So, you know, there's a very strong feeling that it should not be a uh, public access. I'm sure it's it is. Not though, sure. Well, yeah. actually, that doesn't seem like a good argument. No, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that's that's what even when we've had permission to do it, it's not well received by the people there. Yeah, yeah. And this came up when we were talking about Long Lake and how <laughs> right. amply used it is. So many people use Long Lake for canoeing and whatnot. Yeah, thought, well, we got five lakes in town. How come we don't spread the load around? I don't want to belabor this particular point too much. I'll just make sure I make it a point. The next I, Spectral Pond has a ramp. Mill still has a ramp, I think. I don't know who wants yeah, to go to Mill. Well, uh, <laughs> that was, somebody put that in next to their house. This guy used to be on the Conservation Trust with us, passed away. Steve. Steve, yeah, Steve Sussman. Steve Sussman. And that right. lot next to his house, did he formally make that public or did he just? It's. There, there is a town owned lot. In the name in the neighborhood, there's yeah. a whole bunch of mill. So, yeah, yeah, it's got yeah. a yeah. It's it's not, time, but it has not. Been 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 three, right? I think Steve Lake yeah. did it's like, like this part of no, I think was it near somewhere? Yeah, it, it's right close to where Steve Sussman was uh, uh, next to his house, right next to his house, and he has parking there and he had the launch area. And I don't know if that's town property or that was his property. I think it is town. We've been on the Clean Lakes Committee. We've been talking about uh, establishing a better boat launch yeah. at Mill Pond. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some water it. flowing. And Madawanagi has no public access. Yeah, unless you go to Westfall, Westfall. Yeah, we've brought this up. Yeah, in Clean Lakes too, and the Four Pond too. So it's good that you brought that up. Yeah. So I'm going to bring yeah. that back to but the Clean Lakes Committee. Of interest, the Clean Lakes Committee. We should work together with a lot the local water department and get them to recontact the Army Corps of Engineers 
was has this long range. Yeah, we just lost. Yeah, painting. we just lost the. You know, we lost our relationship. Yeah, yeah, but I understand either DEP or the feds were like, "You're not putting that dredge on your property in that wetland." Well, the, yeah, and, and that I think that was the the final straw. Yeah. Well, the the Conservation Trust and New England Forestry Foundation, FCLI, and they're, they're willing to donate as long as it's cleaned up. And but but the state and federal regulatory agencies were saying no. Yeah. Are you sure? They, they did it in Millbury. I can't remember where they did it. Someplace south. They did something, you know, a 10 yeah. or 20 acre filling a Phragmites marsh and making it a clean marsh. And my understanding is, I can't remember the DEP or the Army Corps regulatory branch was like, uh, no. Okay, because I've gone to a lot of meetings with the Water Department, along the Army Corps of Engineers. Oh, yeah. About what to do. And all of a sudden, there's no communication. So I, I think it's the Water Department that has the connection, or at least they were in charge of it. It'd be nice to get some yeah. information back. They knew the Department yeah. manager. And get, get a status report, find out where we are, see if there are options. There's a lot of money available for a large public works project. No only for cleaning up the environment, but also to get people to work doing public projects. So you would think that this would be a shovel-ready type project. Except yeah. that getting rid of the dredge foils is possible. It's yeah, wet yeah. also. The, the, the challenge is that, yeah, I know. Guys, we got to get back on pace. I'm sorry. I know yeah. this is important, but we need to be more to walk. Um, but I think boat access to the Great Ponds part. is it's a worthy goal. We don't so have to fly on anything, but yeah. and keep it on the list. Um, so which 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 pond did we did you just mention, Amy? Or the, the, I would say the, the five great ponds that we have in town. Public access to the five great ponds. It could you know be fairly generic. All right, cool. Um, so some of these. I think we'll have time to talk more nitty gritty action steps. So that I think it's good to get, get touch on them right now too. Um, I'm gonna let Peter do this slide. This is, uh, his station was reviewing historic and cultural resources in town. Thanks, Jack. Was there a previous slide to this? Um, <clears throat> no. I guess in my collection. All right, can you click the next one? So this is sort of a summary of what we heard at my table, which was focused on a sort of cultural landscape. Um, and we have a more complete report that we can send you that sort of describes in more detail what the questions are. But basically we ask people, you know, what are the places you care about that represent, you know, the, the traditions and, 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 and heritage of, of the town, and both, the sort of historic sites, which are sort of shown here, some of the key ones like Littleton Depot and Fay Park and the Foster Street Corridor and the Old Mills and Littleton Common and Sarah Dublin Forest. And also if you click again, Jack, the uh, agricultural lands are very important, both as sort of representation of the history of the town, as well as the, the places that keep, people care about currently. So Springdale Farm and Springbrook Farm and the, the two Picard Farms and generally the cor corridor along Great Road and the Gog Hill Orchard and some other smaller farm parcels, really important to people. If you click again, Jack, the, uh, they also talked a lot about the cultural importance of the natural places. So there's, there's obviously, there's an ecological importance, which we're thinking about in terms of how do we protect the natural functioning of those ecosystems. But then there's the, the cultural importance of those areas. And there's some overlap and, and some difference. Uh, but as we go forward with this, we really want to think about in terms of priorities, maybe something which is a so-so ecological landscape, but is really prized by people because there's public access, or it's just a wonderful example of getting out in nature maybe that becomes more of a priority. So some of the natural people, places that people mentioned, Oak Hill, of course, the Hartwell Preserve, Beaver Brook in general, um, talked a lot about Cobbs Pond and the Yap Conservation Area, the wonderful birding down at that part of town, Prouty Woods and uh, Newtown Hill and, and Fort Pond. 
uh, were all identified multiple times by people. And then we also talked about scenic spots and, you know, where can you see the different views? And we have more detail about, you know, being on top of um, Oak Hill and being able to see certain, I guess you can see Boston from Oak Hill, from some of the other hills, um, like Prouty Woods, I guess you can see Wachusett and Monadnock and so on. But there's a lot of overlap between things that are scenic and, and a few spots and the other special places. And then we also talked about, you know, what are the kind of corridors that tie these experiences together? And people identified a number of those sort of connecting different uh, conservation areas, like connecting from Yap Conservation Area over toward, um, was I guess, Newtown Hill along Newtown Road and going from Newtown Hill itself down to Fort Pond. Really seems like an important opportunity. And a lot of people talked about sort of the core of uh, the historic, potential historic district with um, Fate Park and being able to, people already enjoy the walk from there up over Prouty Hill. And so those kind of opportunities are really important to people. And then we also talked about, if you click, I think one more time, Jack, sort of get this larger idea of how can we sort of preserve and celebrate and interpret uh, cultural resources, cultural landscape resources by preserving and enhancing access to a sort of continuous network of corridors that connect the important areas. So they sort of radiate out from Fay Park to Long Pond, but then if we can get a trail around Long Pond, we could get access all the way over Nagag Hill to Sarah Dublin Forest. Uh, we can link kind of a loop that goes further, further out from Long Pond, that sort of wider loop that connects from the farmland along Great Road, down Newtown Road and up across to the, the town forest. And then potentially to try to connect from uh, the center of town south down uh, Foster Street and possibly you down to what could be a future anchor at the uh, the Webster property, um, which sounds like that's important, both potentially for some Native American artifacts, Native American sites, as well as for sort of natural resources. And then there was a lot of discussion also at the table about how can we connect to Oak Hill as part of this larger sort of cultural landscape system, and then potentially getting up to uh, Forge Pond across the, uh, the farms and forests in that corner of town. So what we'll be doing is looking at this in conjunction with the other kinds of landscape systems, you know, the natural ecosystem and the, uh, the recreational trail system and really think about where do we have opportunities to bring those three different kinds of systems together and what can we learn in terms of then potential future priorities to, connect certain things together uh, to create um, kind of a permanent structure for what people enjoy about Littleton now, which is being able to get out um, and, and really enjoy a variety of landscapes and be able to go from a beautiful historic place down to a beautiful natural place and link these together in a way that it's not just like leftover spaces, but really fundamental to the future character of Littleton as it is fundamental to the current character of Littleton. And should that be coordinated with the bike and pedestrian plan that's being worked on right now? Exactly. So I think we're going to incorporate the pedestrian and bike plan into the open space plan to the extent. Yeah. And then yeah. I think about, again, how those sort of, you know, in terms of if we're setting priorities for which trails to connect, let's focus on trails perhaps that also connect important special places, cultural landscapes, historic sites, and so on. It's hard to see on this map, but uh, MAPC did share with us their shape files for um, existing and proposed paths. Um, so there's a proposed shared, shared use path 
the one that goes hugs um, 495 to try to connect to the MBTA station from from this town center and other other paths that are on here and, and so we'll make sure that those are represented in the plan um, so um, then the other thing well, we wanted oh, yeah go ahead Don, you might remember this the town had a lawsuit with the person that had the last lot here that would allow us to connect uh, Long Lake Drive with the uh, is a uh, property mm -hmm. property here. Do you know when that expired? Oh, that we could get access. Yeah, I wouldn't even mention it. And yeah. and we went to court on that. Yeah. And uh, Alan Silver claimed he owned it. Well, yeah, but then that they yeah, really it, was it, it was a time. Not there. It was it was what maybe ten years or something that, years. that we had to have the trail behind their house. Okay, mm -hmm. right. and that, that could that. have the trail in front. It's all wet. It's all wet. Mm -hmm. Um, well, it, it, it goes across where Alan Silver claims he owns it. Right, exactly. But so, so, so the way that was resolved, the the way it was resolved was that when he no longer resides there, uh, that it should go to the town, that corridor in front. So in the meantime, it goes behind as a temporary agreement right. with um so the time period is as long as he is alive and he's is right. It's, 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 it's I years. thought it was ten years. It, it, it's, it's, I don't because I, I talked to town council probably two or three years ago at this point. Said, do we have to do something now? It's been ten years to keep our rights right to that right. frontage land. So, so that Rick and I should look at that. So that right. one's possible then. That the connection that's shown. Well, the there there is a connection. It's just not right along the shoreline. Yeah, it's, it's, it's behind us. Yeah, it's a little awkward to go up the hill and over. Yeah. Could use better. It so use better there, there's also another gap in the certain navigation around. Well, there there, there are really two <laughs> on on Long Pond. There is one close to the the state boat ramp. You know, people have to go out to. Yeah, I'm not talking about the whole certain navigation. I'm just saying that one connection is now yeah. available. Well, it, it, but there are other definitely things that we can work in the future. And, and I, don't, also, I don't want to hold the meeting up too long. I just wanted to ask about that. Particular well, well, there are actually the three three places where there are gaps where you can't go around a long pond. We've tried to solve the other one, which is where the um, very close to the Brown property where the wetlands are. Mm -hmm. There's a tree farm by. Uh, the brown. But anyway, we try to get access there. That would also be access uh, either there or where the horse man property is, where you have to cut across the driveway and they gave us no right of uh, passage, but something we should be working on. We had discussions with them recently and they were having liability issues. Okay. If you're willing to build a boardwalk, we could do it. Yeah, through, through the wetlands. And, and right one heck of a boardwalk. Then that'd be complicated. Probably but we've got the grant, the brown grant part for protecting some of those wetlands. We need to be on either side of it to be able to get access from Prouty up to the commuter rail station. It, it's something I'll, I'll, I'll write out. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, thanks. Um, I, I'm but, sorry. I can't yeah. tell if there's a star there, but the community farm at Prouty should probably eventually be on this map. Okay, yeah. community community gardens. Yeah. Okay. Community, uh, community farm. Oh, community farm. Okay. It's a lease from the New England Forestry Foundation. It's a community gardens work thing. But yeah, the new towns. Yeah, I think a lot of these resources are on our other maps, like some of our inventory maps that we did. Um, so this is kind of a summary of what we heard from people at the workshop, of course. Yeah, so so actually, we're going to zoom back out a little bit to look uh, again at sort of the big picture values, goals, priorities um, uh, as a first step to then help us make sure that we're on the right track for, for everything else in the plan. Um, and so the station, the other station at the public meeting was uh, values and priorities. Um, I was doing that station and have compiled some of the um, notes that um, people put on sticky notes on the, onto the board for that. Um, 
and in three broad groups, natural resources, um, cultural resources, and, and recreation and connections again. So um, the priorities that people mentioned, um, the top priority was protect more land for conservation. And this is related to natural resources only right now. Um, so 16 comments had were related to that as, as citing that as a, some form of that as a priority. An example, um, to preserve existing undeveloped forest in natural areas, particularly those adjacent to existing conservation areas. Um, and to create more continuity of open land trails and natural land for wildlife. Um, and so it, uh, there are another there are other um, priorities in terms of protecting water quality and connecting, creating um, conservation areas that uh, have more wetlands. So those are the, the priorities that people mentioned for, for uh, future co conservation. We're in forging connections extending existing conservation areas and further protecting um, surface waters. Um, and then people were really interested in maintaining the existing areas, conservation areas for um, biodiversity and uh, habitat. Um, so that was commonly mentioned. Uh, There's some mentioning of noise and light pollution, dark skies, um, and people also cared about getting people um, engaged and educated and there was only a couple of comments related to land use policies. Uh, they were actually at odds with each other. One, one comment said, allow cluster development to allow more open space, but also allow necessary dwellings. And then another comment was more green space, less development. Um, when we looked at the values informing those priorities, um, people, people stated values related to ecological health uh, as, as a kind of top uh, value. Um, very similar to that, sustainability and care for the environment um, was, was also frequently mentioned. Um, for cultural resources, people uh, mentioned priorities related to protecting and promoting agriculture um, from protecting farmland permanently through APRs to um, trying to create incentives for improving revenue for, for farms to creating more um, outreach events for education about um, agricultural resources. Um, and then people cared about building community connections and, and cultural connections. Um, so those, um, those were important to people about how to, how to be connected to agriculture, how to be connected to each other and to, and to local culture and local history, um, including Native American cultural, cultural spots and um, historic homes. Um, and then um, the values informing those priorities, people mentioned um, connection to history and culture the most, and then uh, sense, uh, fostering Littleton's sense of community character and sense of place. Education and engagement were important um, and social connections and community vitality. Um, and then, you know, just some of the ones that were mentioned less often are also important. So people mentioned local food in a few, a few times as, as, as one of their values. Um, and then for recreation and connectivity, got the most comments related to, to this, um, th this part of the planning process. Um, and 29 people talked about creating more active recreation facilities, um, aligning future sport need, um, future field needs with the future population of schools. People are really thinking about youth a lot in this, in this discussion um, and, and having better access and, and programs for, for youth sports. And then also having um, good trail connections and, and connections that connect, uh, that they called out um, connecting along the water, along Beaver Brook and other streams connecting neighborhoods, and then also connecting with other towns, specifically calling out Acton. Um, people mentioned improving some, some other park facilities, um, such as pavilions or uh, gazebos um, to host cultural programs and gatherings, uh, public park like the Acton Arboretum, um, and then just increasing the aesthetics of areas with signage and plantings and, and things like that. Um, and then those, it wasn't mentioned as often. It was, it was important to some people to improve access to these spaces um, and to have enough facilities 
distributed throughout town, especially near where the largest populations are located, getting back to that 10 minute um, walking goal. Um, and then uh, a separate category that deserved mention was the question of dog owners and non-owners. Uh, a few people mentioned that as a priority of, of being able to have places for both so that everyone can feel safe and allowed to, to, to have things that they, their dogs want to do and then places to go where you can feel safe with uh, if you don't own a dog or don't have a dog. Um, health was the most common value people mentioned, um, physical, mental, and social, followed by youth development and relationship building. And access and opportunity was important as well for people, and fun and enjoyment as well. Um, overall, looking at the values completely between these three components, natural resources, cultural resources, recreation, and connectivity, um, health was mentioned the most among all three or was mentioned among all three and came out the most. And then ecological health uh, followed that and then youth development. Um, these were also values people mentioned that just were mentioned less common, but um, were, were definitely important to some people. Um, I won't go into detail on these right now, um, which brings us to the vision and values statement. So we wanted to, um, here, here, you know, now that we've looked at all the public input, what are, what's missing from last, the last plans, um, vision for open space and recreation. Um, and so again, the last plan meant, um, mentions links and connections and connectivity. Um, it mentions, uh, that both internally in the town and to neighboring communities. Um, it mentions, um, rural character and, um, agriculture, and it mentions equity and access for people of different um, backgrounds and ages. Um, so this covers, you know, it covers a lot of what, what we were hearing from people now, but I think it leaves out um, some of the, the emphasis on um, ecological health and uh, thriving ecological systems, and then also on um, youth development and, and mental and social health that, that came up a lot coming out of the pandemic, especially. Um, so um, this is a time to sort of add on to this um, so we can draft a vision statement that feels representative of what we want for this, this new version of the plan for the next seven years. Um, so I wanna open that up, open that up for discussion. Well, I think we should add to it the public access to great ponds. I mean, that's that is one of the attributes of Littleton. Good not we had a lot of towns don't have these ponds. Yeah, I and mean, everybody knows there's five, and not all of them. And and, and Fort Pond, not Fort Pond. Uh, Anawanaki has public access through the Westford. Through yeah. Westford, yeah. yeah. So, but um, yeah, so I think we should look at Mill Pond and uh, Fort Pond. I was going to drive by Mill Pond tomorrow, so I'll send you a picture of whatever the heck's out there. <laughs> Mill Pond might be the best choice for public access. Not only the net plan that we want to give to the Conservation Trust, and we all said, well, okay, let's make it access for yeah. Mill Pond and, and by Steve Sussman. So. Yeah. Well, that was my suggestion to additioning to the the values. Yeah, I think certainly what you mentioned about the ecological integrity or health. Probably, I mean, sort of going along with the the access to the ponds is also just the health of the water systems in terms of when a mill pond is a mess, they're filled in with all sorts of stuff. Matt, I want to got growth. <laughs> Actually, they all have they all have a lot of are you speaking about invasive species or other forms of um, yes <laughs> for, for the weed growth is both it's it's invasive species non-native as well as nuisance so, so it's both could we combine that the access and help of the town's great ponds Oh, or just, just water bodies in, in general. Water, for being, great ponds in a lot of ways. Yeah. 
you know, one place that's forgotten about is there's supposed to be a rain yard put on the Aspen Road that goes into Long Pond. That would take care of some of the pollution, a lot of the pollution. That was suggested 20, 30 years ago when the other rain garden went in. And that, that would be a real asset for Long Pond and for that swimming access with beach when it gets closed down as often. Do we have the term long term in there somewhere? I don't see that actually being utilized. If we're talking about, you know, the integrity and the ecological, you know, effects of the net benefits. And I feel like somewhere in there we should be talking about the long run, the long term. Long term and sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> So yeah, I'm hearing um, actually putting in the phrase long term as a way of signaling sustainability somewhere in there. Um, or you might just use sustainability if we want to bring the it's only one word or something. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I have heard you know sometimes sustainability people hear it so often without really knowing what it means. So it can be helpful to have synonyms that say what that actually means to the town uh, long term. Is there anything else that And I guess this this is an OSRP plan, but at least a nod to the cultural historical aspects of of all those things. I mean, I don't know if it fits in a vision statement necessarily or the explanation, but that you know the health of a variety of people's health of in a variety of ways was yeah. high on the the list of comments. So how to I'm not sure how that gets incorporated, whether it's an explanation well, or something. Like health, physical health. Yeah. Right. Well, I think it's yeah, I think that's something that um collectively we should think about some more when we have more time is sort of like one of the things a lot of cities and towns are trying to do is promote, you know, healthy lifestyles. Sort of so much of the problems that we've gotten into, especially with you know, suburbia, is that you're so car dependent that a young family spends so much of its time driving the kids around to different activities that mom and dad never get a chance to actually get any exercise unless maybe they go golfing or whatever it is they they want to do. So kind of a a planning concept now which it is you know how do you make it easy for people to do everything without a car and essentially get exercise while they're doing their daily daily tasks right you know the proverbial 10,000 steps um, is a lot easier if some of those steps include mm -hmm. walking for lunch instead of driving someplace from your office or being able to have a trail that connects from your neighborhood down to the common to go to the market or whatever it might be. So that's something I think we want to talk about more. And then, you know, if we're thinking about sustainability, sort of projecting forward, you know, what are what are the threats that we want to start addressing in terms of the sustainability of healthy water system? Like what's likely to happen with more intense storms? Like we've been having this week and, you know, last couple of weeks in Western Massachusetts have been a disaster. We've got sewer overflows that we haven't had for 30 years because of the intensity of the storms. And I imagine you've been facing some of the similar issues. Well, that'd be part of the, the climate adaptation, sustainability. They all right. cover a lot of territory. I'm afraid I have to go. Um, I can do 10 more minutes and then uh, I got to hit the trail. <laughs> and you're taping this? I am. So let's get the rest of the minutes off. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Bye. Right, thank you. See you later. Good night. Good night, I will see you shortly. <laughs> I'm eating on the way home and then I'll see you over there. <laughs> so, are you comfortable with us uh, sort of rewriting this vision to take into account? Yeah.
right. some of the stuff we've heard to the public process, what you've told us tonight, and then presenting it to uh, you as a draft? Or would you like to sit around at the next meeting and... No, I think present us with a draft. Yeah, yeah sure. please. <laughs> okay. Is there anything anyone wants taken out of the old one? Or I, I was going to kind of grab onto the third rail and just, you know, given the things we saw in the survey and some of the comments, is rural character still appropriate? I thought it was. One of the comments. We made it very high. It's in a rural character. Right? Well, the, the, the tiny the swing boat for any other because most of the people didn't know which one it was. There's like in flux. They're like we want to find a way to get everything. Right. And when people doesn't know what kind of community this is, back to its rural settings. <laughs> Maybe we just saw it high on one. But I mean, it was when it when they were when we asked if it was rural, suburban, or other bedroom or other. It was mostly know. other, and very little bit rural. Yeah, it was like yeah. 57 percent and uh, it was like in flux or transition and didn't know what to call it yeah this one yeah right here. yeah I even so know we already lost that battle you're saying I, well i'm i am i'm asking the question i right. would still well it's just describing a little thing now and not you know in the future didn't really ask what no what we, where you want to go where you want to go that's yeah. true that's true yeah how do you um, want to be versus where it is now I mean, I guess, uh, you yeah, know, I, I personally, I would still kind of think of it as rural because there's more right. farmland than I right. typically think of as suburban. Right. And, you know, yeah. But to me, is kind of the. But on the other hand, we have two major highways running through town, so maybe it's not so rural. I think it would have to offer to it. Like, the other thing. That could be right. That could be that. God, yeah. yeah. That's patient grass. It's amazing. <laughs> I think it's a great I think it's a great question Saul and I think one other piece of information that we haven't had a chance to look at too much yet are, are some of the extra comments that were in the community survey there, there were a lot of comments and, and um, we'll see if there's anything relevant to that question yeah um, it's a good good point Jack So, yeah, I mean, I, I am not, I guess I'm not advocating one way or the other at right. this point. I it's just, just a question. It's a question. And, and yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's literally a matter of perspective. Of course, if you're moving from Boston, it's the wild countryside and the wilderness. <laughs> if you've watched Littleton become more of a suburb, it's no longer rural, but I think, you know, I think it's kind of, you're on a, I don't know if it's a tipping point, but there definitely is an opportunity to protect much of what gives little to um, that sense of history and uh, the sense of being a, a real landscape that's still functioning, both in terms of the natural setting and also a lot of traditional rural activities with all the farms and you know forest land and so on so I, I think it's perfectly appropriate to to try at least within this open space plan to identify the priorities of saying let's not lose another farm or let's let's be careful not to lose the farm that really is going to be the tipping point in terms of that last remnant of sort of ruralness, but we could we could talk some more about that. I think with the uh, the next discussion yeah. about the the vision. Okay, sounds good. So yeah, if uh, you guys could provide us with a draft for our next meeting, that would be uh, fantastic. We can review it and uh, go from there. Yeah, and then we also have to dig into our goals and priorities and then our action steps. So there's there's plenty of drafting to do. Um, th this These were the goals and priorities from 2016. And when we look at how those compare to what was in the survey, um, there is definitely still a lot of 
of relevance to these goals. Um, you know, goal number one, protect and enhance water quality in Littleton. Um, preserve Littleton's important land resources through land acquisition, conservation restrictions, agricultural preservation restrictions, improved management and education. Um, and then goal number three, provide improved recreational opportunities for in Littleton for residents of all ages and abilities. So I think those three still seem like priorities to, to the town. And um, then goal number five is, is already sort of covered by the bike ped plan, but um, maybe, maybe worth calling out again in this plan. And um, there are some goals in here that, you know, I wonder about uh, if they're, um, how does the, how does this plan want to deal with, balancing development and, and with the new development that's coming to Littleton, um, how much should the, this plan set, set some actions for that? Um, um, before the, it talked about uh, planning board's open space cluster bylaw, is that something that still feels relevant? Um, and these, so yeah, the, there's, and then there's four more on the, on the right-hand side of this page. Um, uh, so we want to dig into these and we want to make sure that they're, they're fresh, but also I think there's a lot that still is relevant to, to this, this iteration of the plan from last plan. Um, this, is this something we could send out for homework? You know, people just review this and. Yeah, that, that sounds great. Respond or identify any continuing priorities or sort of. What is it? Vote up, vote down. Yeah, yeah maybe that's enough. We uh, you know, review these uh, prior to the next meeting and you know, weigh things out based on what we've heard tonight. And uh, uh, of course, we can't discuss via email outside of the meeting, uh, but maybe um, Alicia and Amy could uh, maybe we'll figure be, that out. Yeah, yeah, how we can do it. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, yeah, I think it makes sense to, to try to coordinate some, some of this um, and give, I think we can definitely get a draft of the vision statement to you, in, you know, before next meeting. So to kind of a starting point following from this meeting, try to do that soon. Because then I think we're going to have, you know, that vision statement is just to help ground everything else. And then we want to get into these goals and, and, and maybe have some of your input on these um, before crafting our action action plan. Um, so yeah, I know that you need to leave soon, Andrew. Um, just you know, where we are in the process, we're we're formulating the goals, objectives, and seven year plan, and 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 drafting drafting those for your review. And in, in August, when we meet next, um, you'll have hopefully had a chance to look at those, and then we can have have some some. Um, of your verbal feedback, but if there's a chance for written feedback before then, um, that'll allow us to, to go through the drafting process before September. And we, I think we decided on September 20th for when we want to have this ready for the public to look to review. So perfect. It sounds like we're written track. So the only thing um, that I did want to mention about the September 20th date is that the search room is not available. Um, so I don't know if we want to rethink a date or if we are okay with doing this in like a cafeteria of the school. I think we should have it in skirts because it's a place people normally expect things like this to happen. Yeah. Do we know who books starts? Like so apparently they have an internal event with a library. Oh. It's not available. Um, I can pull it up and see if there's any other day. Uh, that time frame, Jack, what worked for you guys? Because um, I know some of those days work and some don't. <laughs> yeah, I think... I think we don't have a lot in our calendar yet, but Peter, you can correct me. Um, yeah, it's sort of filling in slowly, but there's nothing major, I think. We need to pull up the meeting rooms and take a look.
take a look and see what we got. So it looks like, well, actually, I open this the 19th and the 21st. So on either side of those. So a Tuesday or a Thursday. Great, I'm seeing our calendar free for either of those days. Any preference? Okay, either with a, a somewhat of preference toward Thursday for me. Thursday sounds good. No, we're just kind of worked at the door. All right. All right, so I'll put a request in for that right now. It changed. Okay. And were we still going to stick with the seven to nine? That sounds good. Yeah, we're we're amenable to what you think is the best for people's schedules. So. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. So I think we've um, we've got some clear action items for our next uh, meeting. We'll review the goals and priorities, mission statements uh, a bit more, and uh, do a little more planning for the uh, third public workshop. Um, Let's see, I'm just trying to, we did touch on just about everything that was listed on our agenda in uh, within uh, Peter and Jack's updates. Um, so I think everything but the ADA self-evaluation um, we covered. Uh, did we want to just zip through that really quick? Uh, we don't necessarily. Uh, that's yeah. true, that's true. I do feel even four minutes. Um, when we table, so there's more than four minutes. Sorry. That's a good idea, yes. <laughs> So, uh, so Jack and Peter, why don't we table that uh, for tonight, and uh, we'll take it up at our next meeting. And uh, while we have everybody here, why don't we go ahead and set the next meeting uh, dates? So the last Tuesday is August 29th. Tuesday, August 29th. <laughs> Does that work for everybody? What time? Do you want to shoot at five thirty yeah. again? Should we do six? Since it was a little bit, um, we ran a little bit late today. Yeah, we should actually get here. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was a one-time thing for me. Hopefully, hopefully, I should actually go back to three weeks for the permanent ones. So we did fun with Italian. Yeah. All right. So 6 p.m. on a third uh, Tuesday, August 29th. It is first day of school. Oh, is it? Oh, is it? Oh, oh. is it okay? It's fine. Ah. First day of school. Um. Yeah. No, I'll probably have to take. I have to drive back. <laughs> oh, here. No. Oh, no. seriously. <laughs> I'll show up to this. Nobody else volunteered. <laughs> oh. Um. Okay. So August 29th at we'll do 6 p.m. Perfect. Okay. All right. I, well, I do believe that uh, we've covered just about everything. Uh, any last minute thoughts before we close out? Just one of the goals for 2016 we're going to look over. Was that in the book you handed out, Alicia, when we first started this thing? I believe so. If not, then I will definitely get all of that to you guys. I was like, if yeah. we can get the presentation from tonight, that would be. Yeah. Oh, yes. Would you be okay to send that to me, Jack? Sure. Yeah. Do it right now. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for all the uh, compiling and analysis. I mean, I, I'm super impressed with what you guys have done. Yeah, it's 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 definitely exciting to look at the public input and people. It's sort of the, the heart of it. So. All right. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Jack and Peter. Yeah, thank you all. Have a good August. We'll be in touch.
It was recorded. I saw the. Stop recording. Yeah. Okay, I'm like, I knew 